Hello everybody, my name is Infinity and welcome to another Centro Knitting Machine tutorial. For today's tutorial, I am doing a community requested project. So way back in February, I was asked, I was tasked with creating a kitchen towel topper on the Centro Knitting Machine. Now, if you guys don't know about this Centro Knitting Machine, I am a lover of it. It is basically like the Addy, but it's a less expensive, expensive version and it's very easy to use. So I decided that the original 48 needle one was way too big for this task. So I bought the mini version with 22 needles specifically for this project. And in my first experimentation with this project, I was able to pretty much successfully come up with a project. And I was like, oh, cool, this is great. And I posted it on Instagram. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll leave that link listed in the description box below. I'll also link all the materials you need down in the description box below. Um, so this one came out really long. <laughs> so you want to keep in mind the height of your stove or wherever you're going to be hanging these. But this one came out really long, so I made a shorter one today. Um, it doesn't look much shorter, but it, it'll hang a lot higher than this one. So before we get started, you are going to need scissors. You're going to need a crochet hook, preferably like a four to a four and a half millimeter because this gauge is smaller than what the machine cranks out. You're going to want a darning needle, some stitch markers, you can optionally have these little rings or you can get the wooden rings. I like these because you can open them up. If you have a super thick towel, you can just kind of stuff it in there. Or if you need to take the ring out for some reason, you can do that. Or you can crochet a loopy. It doesn't matter. Um, and then, of course, you're going to want the 22 needle machine for this. You're also going to want buttons. And you can make this in an array of colors. You, you can use a solid color you can use multiple colors as I've done here um, I did that for visibility but the option is totally up to you these make great gifts for the holidays or house warmings and I just I'm happy with the result of this so without further ado I'm gonna get into the tutorial so what you want to do first of all is make sure that your machine is switched down to tube knitting and you are going to want to cast on so in this case, what I do is I, I actually leave a decent amount of tail because I use this for sewing later or crocheting later. So I just want to pull out a decent amount of tail and I'm going to make a slip knot. Alright, and I'm just going to drop that tail down in there and I'm going to loop this slip knot right on over this hook, this needle, and kind of cinch it. All right, so now I'm gonna cast on. So when you cast on, you're supposed to go wrap your yarn around the front of the needle, then around the back of the next one, the front of the next one, the back of the next one. Take your time with this because this version has these little bumps here, which I, mentioned in a previous video I don't care for so you might it might take you extra little minute to cast on and that's perfectly okay in general though it doesn't take long to get back around to that black needle all right so now I'm just gonna pop this into the tensioner I used the middle one for this type of yarn. Now you are going to want to have a tape measure handy for this um, because this machine does not have a row counter. So either you're going to want to have one of those row counters that you put on your finger or you can just measure the length. Keep an eye on that length of that project that's going down in that machine because with this one I made it a little extra long and um, even with the skirt <laughs> it's just long. So unless your stove is like way up high or something, you're going to want to make sure that you are making this just short enough. Alright, now that we've cast on, what I'm going to do is just start cranking. drop my yarn in my basket. 
make that a lot easier. Pro tip, if you are counting rows and you don't have a row counter or you don't have a tape measure, you're just eyeballing it, you can use your stitch markers um, to count the rows. If you're keeping your eye on that black indicator needle, you can just stick a stitch marker on that row and then you'll know where to leave off when you're counting. So I'm just going to keep cranking this until I reach my desired length and then I will meet you guys back when I am ready to cast it off. Alright guys, so I have cranked up about 6 inches of fabric. For this other model, I did like 9 inches on accident. Like I said, no row counter. So I realized that this was a little long, so I'm thinking the 6 inches should be better. So that is entirely up to you. You can crank as many or as few rows as you would like. Just take into account how high or low your stove um, stands. So. What you're going to want to do is snip a tail eh, several inches long. It can be ridiculously long. Mine's about 15 inches right now. Um, I won't need that much, but it's there if I do. Alright, and you want to make sure that black needle has caught the yarn. And you're going to crank a full row without yarn in it. with the yarn up in a vertical position and you're just going to start cranking. Alright, and I always stop maybe a couple needles before that black needle pops back up so I can go in with my yarn needle or you can use the one that came with the machine like most people do. <laughs> and um, you can go about casting off these stitches. So, just going to whip them on off of there. And I'll meet you guys back when I have completed that task. Alright, that didn't take too long at all. So, now you can just pull your project off your machine. And you can actually push it to the side over here. And what we are going to be dealing with is this piece of fabric that we just cast off. So, it should look like this more or less. And what you want to do is just cinch it closed. Just like that. Now, you want to leave a little bit of spacing up here after you cinch it closed, just so it lays flat. Like this. Okay? And actually, you might want to fold it to where the yarn, where it's coming out, it's at a corner. That works typically better. So you want to make sure it's flat. And then you're just going to start um, whip stitching it closed. And you can do it either once or twice. It just depends on how comfortable you, comfortable you are. But I'm only going to do it once. Now what you want to do is grab a crochet hook. So the one that I have is a 4 millimeter, which is smaller than the gauge of these stitches that I cast off that Centro Mini Machine. And I'm just going to turn my work around because what I want to do is actually start crocheting a little bit. So what I did in my original towel topper is I just inserted my hook as close to this top part as possible and I yarned over oops I yarned over and I pulled up that loop and I chained one all right and then I went back into that same space where I did that chain one and I single crocheted and then I went over into the next stitch which if you can see I'm just going between the little V's and I am yarning over I'm going to make another single crochet 
just like that. Okay? Then you want to look at your button. You want to look at your button and determine how big it is. So you can determine how big this loop needs to be. So I'm going to do six just to be safe. <laughs> and so one, two, oops, three. If I can keep my yarn on my hook, that would be great. Four, five, six. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to get close to this edge where I know I was sewing. And I'm going to insert my hook in these stitches right between those little V's. And I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and I'm going to make another single crochet. And then in the stitch next to it, I'm going to make another single crochet. Now, if you would like, you can go about making single crochet, like you can slip stitch, chain one. Oops, I might want to finish my stitch. Now, if you would like, you could chain one, you could turn your work, and you could slip stitch into the top of that single crochet that you just made. You can single crochet into the, I'm sorry, you can slip stitch into that next one. And then you could go about single crocheting all the way around that band. If you have enough yarn left. Or you can just leave it as the chains. In my other pattern, I left it as the chains. It's entirely up to you, though. I'm just going around that chain space, filling it up with single crochets until I get to those other two at the base, my anchor single crochets. Insert my hook, slip stitch, Go into the next one, slip stitch, and then I could slip stitch into the bottom of that. Chain one, and then I can fasten off. So there's the first part of this towel topper. And so later on, you can go back and sew in that end if you'd like, or you can sew it in at this point. I'm going to go ahead and sew mine in, and then I'll meet you guys back. We're going to attach this button. Alright, so what I did next, I proceeded to sew on my button. I determined how high or low I wanted this button to go, and I was thinking somewhere around here for this one. So what I'm going to do... I'm just going to lay my button here as a place marker, so to speak. And I'm going to knot the end of my yarn. I cut off a piece of yarn. It's about 12 inches. You don't need quite that much, but I like to have more. And what I do is I make a double-stranded slip knot at the end of my yarn. And instead of letting it be a slip knot, I pull it closed as though it were not and it's not going to come loose and I'll snip it when I get done with it all right so if you don't know how to sew on buttons I guess it's fun time so what we're going to do is I put my hand inside this little I call it a sock <laughs> I put it inside this little sleeve and you can choose whichever hole you would like and you can just come up through the fabric like so and you can place the end of your needle through one of those buttonholes so it's really 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 helpful if you have um, large eyed buttons but if not regular buttons can do you just have to use thread or embroidery floss all right now this needle I'm going to go over to this diagonal buttonhole and I'm going to go down and I'm only going through one layer of my fabric under here so I'm not closing 
both sides of this sleeve together. But I am going to go down in that um, diagonally adjacent hole and I'm going to just pull down my yarn so that it's coming across here like this. All right, and you don't want to tuck this too tight because you're going to want to make the shank underneath it, which I will also show you how to do. But what I want to do is come back up and we are going to be putting our needle through that next hole at the bottom. I'm going to pull it up and then we're going to go down into that last empty one. Like I said, not attaching it to the back of the project, but we are sewing it to essentially the front part. Oops. All right. Now we have this. Adorable, right? Now we have this. And this is what you want. So now what we're going to do is we are going to bring our yarn and needle back up through the fabric underneath this button. So you can bring it up. And then what we can start doing is wrapping this around the button a few times. So you can do it more or less. The more you do it, the higher the higher your button will sit. And this you can pull tight. All right. And I like how this one is sitting. So now we can just take our needle and our thread and we can put it right through this shank that we just created. You can go through and go down to tack it down. And then what you can do is you can roll this up, much like a cuff, and you can identify all these strings, and you can actually knot this. You can do it once or twice, whichever makes you feel better. And if you are just concerned that it may come apart, you can use a little fray check. A little dab will do you, and then you can snip these ends. Because that's going to dry into place, and it's never going to come apart, ever, once it's dry. Alright, now that we have finished sewing our button on, you can, of course, close it if you would like. And this is what that looks like. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to work on this bottom part. So I found the corner where my yarn is coming from, and I unrolled I unrolled my little curled up ends here. And you can do this as neatly you want to do this as neatly as possible. So I end up folding in my edges so that all my straggly ends are not showing. 
You can do this in whatever way you'd like or whichever way is easiest. Once you kind of get it started, fold it down, then you can, I'm going to pin it with my crochet hook so it doesn't come apart on me. You can then thread your needle with your yarn. Gonna pull that crochet hook out of there. Now I'm gonna start sewing. So, like I said, you want to do this as neatly as possible. I'm just tacking that corner in so I can have a less difficult start. And I am going to begin sewing. Okay, so once you get it all sewn together, you can actually unthread your needle because the rest of what we're going to do is crochet. So, what you're going to want to do is insert your crochet hook in this very same corner that your yarn is coming out of now. And you're going to yarn over, you're going to pull through, pull up that loop, we're going to chain one. And then we're going to insert our hook in that same spot. We're going to pull up a loop. And we're going to single crochet. And we're going to do that all the way across. Okay, so what you want to do in the end is have an odd, potentially odd number of stitches. If, it, if you come out with even stitches, it's not the end of the world. Um, so now that I have my desired number of stitches, which I have like 15, so I'm just going to chain my one, and I turned my work already. So I am going to single crochet into the base of that chain one. And I'm going to single crochet in the next several stitches until I come to the center of my work. So this is the point where you, once you come to the center part of your work, you can either connect a ring or you could actually do chains and that would serve as your loop for your towel. So I use this little shower ring. I got a pack of these from the Dollar Tree and I finally found a use for them. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that my yarn is behind the ring that I'm going to be crocheting around and my needle is in front of that ring and just making sure that that ring is between my needle and my working yarn and I'm just going to like chain around it and you can crochet as many stitches around this ring in this next one, I'm going into the stitches underneath the ring, and I'm going back, grabbing up my yarn, pulling up a loop, and now I'm single crocheting. And this anchors this ring to the project. 
me see if I can zoom in. Alright, so I'm going into this stitch underneath my ring, going out to the back. I am yarning over that working yarn, pulling up a loop. And then I'm going back through the ring, yarning over and pulling through oops, those two loops on my hook. You can do this as many times as you please. What I aim for is to have an even amount of stitches on both sides of my ring. So that's why I said to wait till you got to the center part of your project. I already have three stitches on my ring. I'm going to get that fourth one. I'm going to do a fifth one. I'm going to connect a little bit more yarn. Complete that stitch. Alright. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch of my row with a slip stitch just to mimic the other side. Alright. Now my ring is perfectly centered on this row. Alright. Now I'm going to go into this next stitch, insert my hook, and I'm just going to slip stitch just to mimic the other side of my ring. And now I'm just going to single crochet into the end. One, two, three, Oops. and then four. Alright, now I can pull up a loop. Well, I can chain one. Pull up my loop and I can fasten that off. And then I'm going to weave that in. And then I'm going to meet you back with my central machine so that we can make the skirt part of this towel hanger. Alright, once you finish this guy, like I said, you can set it to the side. I'm just going to lay mine up there. And I'm going to bring back my central machine. Alright, now I'm going to get my color B. Like I said, I'm working in two colors just so it will be easier to see when I'm sewing it together. Let's go ahead and reset this guy where that black needle is in the up position. So we're going to be working another tube. Um, I don't want to call it a panel, but we're going to be working another tube. And in this case, you just want to leave a decent enough amount of um, tail again so that you can go around the end of the skirt. So about 10, 15 inches just to be on the safe side. And I'm going to loop my slip knot around there. I'm going to cast on, and you're going to crank for the length of the skirt that you want. I typically crank until that ring, or if you use the loop, is covered up, and nobody can see the crochet work underneath. Make sure that tail goes down in the machine. So I'm going to get cranking on this and I'll meet you guys back when I have the length of skirt that I want. Alright, so I have about 4 inches of fabric down in this machine, so I am going to, again, make a 10 to 15 inch tail, a little more, maybe, 
just to make sure that I have enough and I'm gonna go about casting off and I'll meet you guys back when I am ready to sew on my skirt okie doke so I have cast off my little skirt and here I have my um, hanger part of my towel topper so you have a couple options when it comes to this skirt you could once you cast off you could probably go around it with crochet if you wanted to if you don't want to deal with the curling or you can just go about um, sewing it on normally then we have the hanger I just put these stitch markers here so when I start sewing I have an even idea on how I want to sew my skirt on so to begin if you have an extra long tail on the opposite end of your skirt, you can just kind of roll it up. We're going to be flipping it inside out. Right, and I do this because the curling, um, like I said, you can probably negate that with single, a row of single crochets going around it. Just bringing my needle on out of there all right and then I'm just going to make sure the end that I'm gonna sew across here is at the bottom and I am going to go ahead and slip this skirt onto my project just tuck this end of the strings inside the project for now not too close to where you're going to be sewing but just like up at the top all right and you want to make sure that this edging of this skirt is lined up and nice and flat with your stitch markers Now, what I did with my original pattern, I ended up cinching it just a little bit, not too much. And then I just went about sewing it. Now this time, I go through both sides of the fabric. So I went completely out the back side and back through the front side of this. At this point, it doesn't really matter. Um, you can do it like that. Or if you're just, um, I don't know, if you're nitpicky, you can sew it to the single layer. Of fabric it's entirely up to you but for today's tutorial I'm gonna again go just back and forth similarly you could also slip stitch this across I just already had my needle threaded Alright, so once you go across here once, if you're sewing this down, you can just go across here once. You can even go back and do it twice if you're unsure about the integrity of your stitching. Um, I'm not too particularly worried, so I'm just going to leave it at this one. And I'm going to come back through here and I'm going to just fasten this off. If you did this, if you slip stitch this on with a crochet hook, you should be good to go. Just chain one and fasten off. Now I'm going to use fray check right here. And I'm going to snip my yarn. We're almost done. So now what we want to do is we're just going to turn our skirt down. And now you can see on this one when you had those markers there you could sew more evenly so you have a nice straight line and the holder either the loopy you made or the ring that you used is nice and concealed 
in here and now what I like to do this is just personal preference if you like this little curling up of the fabric you could basically sew in this end and be done what I personally do is I insert my crochet hook and I just do a row of single crochets all the way around this project and I think it adds a nice little touch And you could also use other stitches for this bordering. I just prefer to keep it simple for this tutorial, but you are more than welcome to experiment with different edgings and trimmings. And if you do that, I would love to see them tag me either on Facebook or Instagram at Infinity Crafting Company or Infinity Crafting Co. I've also created a hashtag for Infinity Crafting Co. So anytime you use my patterns, like I said, feel free to tag me. I would love to see what you guys create. I won. Haha. -ha. I'm going to close this row with a slip stitch. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to fasten off. That was perfect. <laughs> All right. So this is my finished product. So all I need to do is just weave in this little mini end and I'm going to tack it down. I'm weaving it into these single crochets and then I'm going to pull it through and tack it down with some fray check. And that bad boy is never going to come out. Alright, and my project is done. Completely done. Now any kind of odd shape it now any kind of odd shapes that you come across, you can easily just stretch it out or you can um, block it for a specific shape, but otherwise you are completely done. I hope today's tutorial was fun. I certainly had been looking forward to recording this for a while. If so, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I will be posting more fun project tutorials in the future. If you have suggestions for future projects or there's something you want me to attempt to make on the central machine either size, I will be more than glad to experiment with it and show you guys the results of my efforts. Don't forget to check out my other social media. I'm on pretty much everything except for Snapchat. If you guys don't know, back mid-July, I started a new Instagram page. It is growing very steadily, and I am so glad that you guys decided to join me over there. That is where I post all my works in progress and announcements for patterns. As well, I've been doing Vlogist, so that has been a thrill. <laughs> so don't forget to check me out over there and I'm also on Etsy I just released um, a pattern of mine a shawl pattern of mine it's called the Airways shawl that is now available it is a beginner level pattern all you need is yarn and a crochet hook and until next time guys happy making